Welcome to Found Footage Friday. All right, Tubi is at it again. This time, Evil Things. It's been a while since I saw this one. I didn't even remember really what it was about. Yeah. But um, what'd you think? I like this. Yeah, <laughs> I did too. I liked it. Yeah. I think it's got. Uh, well, I'll let you talk about what like what it's about no. first. Oh. Well, so I mean, it, it's well, we're doing spoilers. Spoilers here, as so. usual. So, um, it. I mean, it's a pretty basic concept here. What I did really like, as far as now, it's super quick. So it's something you like got to pause, it, otherwise you'd miss it. But in the opening, we get this very quick um, bit of text on the screen that's like a police file kind of thing, and it shows us like um, the. This is footage or whatever, right? And it says in it that it was, like, not donated, but, um, you know, delivered by Anonymous. Mm, yeah, so I gotta say that. So what's cool about this movie in that way is that I pretty much have an answer for everything when it comes to the questions people might have of, like, if this is found footage, how come this and this and that, Right. The movie does a really good job of not only addressing that at the beginning by being like, this was given by the killer, mm -hmm. right? So the footage was dropped off to the police station by the killer, which is really scary. Yes. Because this is somebody who just does not care no. and wants his work to be known. And in addition to that, any kind of like music that might be in the movie or noises or whatever we see at the end of this movie that the killer has like an editing software setup yeah. in his van, which is what I'm assuming it's in his van, but it might be at his house. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's a good point. I'm I thinking think it's it in his movie. van. It's a good idea. Maybe, maybe not. Whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. He takes the footage and he compiles it and edits, together, edits it together yeah. to make a film mm -hmm. to then send in like found footage. It's like... He's making his own real found footage yeah. film. Now, of course, it's conveniences, right? That that there would be a group of people. But it's also addressed in here that he only goes after people who are like videographers yeah. or film. He you know, targets like film students. Because he wants the footage. Yeah. Now, as I said, there's the convenience of that they would continue to keep filming and right. whatever. So the only thing I would have liked in this movie, the only thing that I would change, is I would have the killer like slide a note under the door or mm. something that said, stop filming and you die. You know, yeah, something like that where he's like forcing them. them to film. But other than that, man, I can pretty much explain everything. And I really think that the film does a really good job because this is one of the first films I've seen where the killer is actually like making a found footage film yeah. of their footage and his footage and sending it in so that we can see it. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. that's awesome. I do too. I think that's like super unique. And um, I, I mean, I think that my big takeaway from this is how real the film feels. Yeah. I think that like the characters, like their interactions felt so believable. Like they really feel like a group of friends. Um, which is something that we we talk about many times when we watch found footage, but yeah. it's just really refreshing to see it because like it helps with the immersion, obviously, so much. And yeah, I like that everything is explained with like why there's music yeah. and um, you know, because at the end there is like a whole section where you're like, why is there music happening right now? But it totally makes sense, yeah. and it makes it even creepier because it's like this guy is specifically trying to make found footage, like. What? what? But he wants to like, kill people and hurt people. I do want to add, though, that the only way this works, the way the movie is, there has to be two people. Yeah. I definitely thought there was multiple people, but we only two. see the one. But it would be really, what would be really cool is if there had been a reveal that there is, like, a group of killers that kind it's of possible. parallel, parallel, I don't know why I emphasized it like that, uh, the friend group yeah right so there's like the cameraman and you know whatever mm. um but yeah i just i thought it was really cool it was very believable like that's definitely a really big highlight i think that they did a fantastic job the only like 
thing that is weird in the film that we noticed like throughout our watch that was kind of annoying. Oh, this is super annoying. Is that there's these moments where it it's not like, moments. There's it's so often. There's so many moments where yeah. there's like a slow motion effect. Yes. On just the video, not on the audio. It's like no. very like brief and like mild Subtle, yeah. but still noticeable Very. and we couldn't figure out why it was distorting like that i i think that it was just a but it's weird now because we're saying like the killer, the edited, killer edited the video so to be did slow. he specifically slow down moments but they're such like they're not they're nothing moments they're not no, like focusing on no, somebody's yeah. like an object or something that seems relevant it's just like very random so i don't know what that i don't know what that is <laughs> it's not only just random but it's so often it yeah. literally happens like for probably five seconds at a time every 30 seconds it's to a minute weird. but it, n not even a minute like 30 seconds like every 30 seconds you can pretty much set your watch hey you're gonna get five to ten seconds of this like partially slowed down footage it's like if the footage is at like, you know, 24 frames. Mm -hmm. They've brought it down to like 20 yeah. or like, it's weird. It's just this very off. And I, I feel like it's purposely done to add this feeling of like, you know, um, there's something off. Yeah. Right? I do but, too. But it's, it's insanely distracting. It's very distracting. I and it, it hate doesn't, it. yeah, it didn't make me feel like something was off. I was just kind of questioning why it was happening the whole time yeah so well, that's the only like criticism about how i think it looks otherwise i think that it's filmed fine you know like it, it definitely works <clears throat> with found footage style i would love a copy of this with all the footage played at normal speed yeah this would be a better film for me for sure so the slowed down footage randomly all the time for no reason at all when the audio isn't slowed down is just weird yeah it's weird it's weird it's weird okay so all right the movie starts with a pup it's a good yeah. way to get kaylee's attention as yeah. far as the plot goes i mean there really isn't much here there's like a birthday they're going up to a cabin mm -hmm. somebody follows them a guy in a van is is very like unhinged and is like following them which is creepy the way that the the van follows them yeah is creepy it's now super creepy this is definitely one of those movies like many where you could critique the actions of people and be like, why didn't you wait, blah, blah, you know, we can definitely do that. Nothing's so unbelievable to me that I'm like, because once again, character actions are not plot holes. They're just bad character decisions. People make bad decisions. It just, you know, it is yeah. what it is. Um, should they have called the police? Should they have? Yes. 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 Right. So, I, but are there people who wouldn't? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I thought it was believable enough, like yeah. their, their reactions to things. I don't know what they tell the cops, honestly. I mean, yeah. They, like a van's after me. I do think that they have like the footage and everything and they can be like, look, we've been driving for a while. And you should have gotten the license plate. Us. They should have yeah. gotten the license plate, of course, if they're going to do that. But I think their reactions are fine. Like the girl, like everyone's really freaked out at first. And it's just like, yeah. what? Like they're in a car on an icy road. Like you don't want to be like fighting with somebody when you're in a vehicle because that's dangerous i'm gonna have two at least pro tips for you in this video i don't do pro tips as much as i should but pro tip number one if you're ever being followed number one thing you want to do is never go home <laughs> okay if you think you're being followed do not take them to your place of refuge right this is your place where you go for your you know safety you can't let them know where you live so until you are a hundred percent positive i mean i guess you can never be a hundred percent positive but making sure that you are as positive as you can be that they're not following you anymore you got to go to the police yeah you got to go somewhere else you got to go to a public place right be in a, in a crowded area like freaking Sarah Connor in Terminator. Uh, you you got to go somewhere like that. Call the police, you know, make sure that you got this. So if you are really thinking someone is genuinely following you, do not go home. Do not go to where you live. Okay. And that once they know where you live, you're screwed. Yeah. Um, okay. 
Another thing here, not a pro tip, but one thing is the... <laughs> And we, Kaylee and I got into a little bit of a back and forth, nothing like serious or anything, but this whole idea that any guy who does anything lame, girls always attack oh. the size of their penis. <laughs> yeah. So you little dick, it's got to compensate this and that. We were, not all guys who are assholes have small dicks. No, this is just not a real we thing. Were, we were arguing about it. I, we, I was just no, saying that argue. I think that girls say that as a way to hurt guys' feelings yes. because that's something that men place a lot of value on yeah. themselves. And so that's like, and, I think it's shitty to do, of course, but I think that's like... And my rebuttal. And you were like... Um, Wait, what did you say? You said that. <laughs> I said, I think this shows you what a girl truly values. Oh, because yeah. Because a you guy said who is less that. than yeah. has a small penis. So, therefore, guys with small penises matter less to them. Yeah. That's, I mean, you could take it one of both ways. I, I definitely think that Kaylee's probably more right on that. And I think that's the more obvious choice. That's the one that we all normally go towards. It's like, oh, it's just a way to be demeaning. Right, it's a it's a way to belittle him and, and bring him down, um, yeah. knock him down a few pegs, right? Because as I said, just because a guy's a dick, he drives a big freaking lifted truck and all that, I can guarantee you, <laughs> tons of those dudes have monster dicks, and it literally has no bearing on the size of your penis. I'm sure some of them have small dicks, and some of them don't. I'm sure it's... some really nice guys who drive really like, you know. Um, normal cars and whatever <laughs> have really little dicks too and it's have really a, big dicks as well oh my it's gosh. just it, it's just it's just it's, this thing that girls have to launch at a guy to try to hurt their feelings but as i said i also am on, under the belief too that subconsciously maybe even consciously a girl is like i now i value you this guy less <laughs> and guys i value less are guys with small pain it's such a weird like <laughs> arbitrary thing to have like because it's the same thing with like, because guys will will insult girls by being like, you're ugly, you're fat, you know, whatever, you right? Lose like, pussy. yeah, like they say stupid stuff like that all the time, as though that has any relation to how, like, who yeah, the person right. is. Yeah. Like, it literally, it's such, it's like, wait, what? That's an appearance and an exterior thing. Yes. But yeah, also, I mean, but they're scared. They're total, those, the girls in this are obviously like terrified. And that is their way of like, being aggressive and lashing out by yeah. being like, you've got a tiny dick. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. And yeah, I mean, attractiveness is overrated. Yeah. Um, anyway, so um, something that happened multiple times in this, and I know that this is realistic because I know people do this because I've ran into this in my life. But one thing that was irritating the fuck out of me, and it's irritating the fuck out of me for two reasons. Number one is because I myself have had this experience. So, you know, I relate to this all too well. Um, and also because, like, what do you want anyway? And I know people do this, but so the main, the guy, there's two of them, but the guy who's not filming, uh, when the van finally comes up to them again, he goes outside to confront the guy yeah. and his girlfriend like refuses to speak to him. Oh, and yeah, everyone in the car is like yelling at him and is so mad at him. It's like, what do you want them to do? Just stick his head in the fucking sand? You I know? mean, I do think their reactions are supposed to be like, well, I don't know. I guess I was don't, seeing it as like, they're, don't stir the pot. they're lashing out out of, out of fear. I of, get like, that. You could have gotten hurt. But I, I agree with you. I feel like at that point, with how much they've been seeing him and how he's yes. clearly trying to, like, be creepy, I do feel like you should probably be confrontational. But Kaylee yeah. knows all too well that if this was to happen to us, <laughs> I would have been at his window way before this. Yeah. Way before this. On the side of the road when they were getting <laughs> passed, I would have immediately been, like, pulled the fuck over uh -huh. right now. I have a horrible temper. It probably might get me killed. I don't know, but I know. So watching this guy try to take action and do something, they're not doing anything. Yeah. They're just sitting there being, you know, victims. They're just sitting there being sitting ducks. Yeah. And this guy is just watching them. 
And this guy goes at least tries to do something. And I know also, some people are know, like, oh, no, you're, you're just going to piss them off. Dude, they followed you to three different fucking locations. Yeah. It's well past that point. I, something needs to be done. I also think that even though there's another guy there, I think it's obvious. It's mostly the girls that are the ones reacting. And I do think that, like, if there were no men there, like, a lot of women would feel very i mean like they already feel unsafe but i don't think that any of them even if one of them wanted to be confrontational or was like angry enough about it yeah like i don't think that they would probably <laughs> go up to him and go to the van and try and confront him because it's like so dangerous and it's just kind of like a thing that I, a lot of women I, I don't think would act that way but i mean this this is, is a one this is a scenario because i'll give this film credit for this, this is not commonly done in found footage, but this is not supernatural. <laughs> Most found footage, like I'd say 85, 90% of found footage is supernatural. Yeah. Um, and like it actually being a human killer or human killers is fairly unique for this subgenre. It's not completely unique. There's definitely other films, but it's just, it's cool. Anyway, um, but the thing I was um, about to get at with that is like this is one of those examples anytime i watch a movie like this i this is why i'm always like you know i'm always gonna be pro people having weapons to defend themselves yeah. right in this kind of scenario as anti-gun as you may be yeah and trust me i i'm not a huge gun guy but in this scenario you want a gun right you will very much wish because I watched the the, the Equalizer movies <laughs> right before we watched this. Yeah. And it was just such a stark contrast of, like, someone who is so able to, you know, protect themselves versus people who have literally no idea how to protect themselves in any way. And they are just lambs for the slaughter. There's nothing that these guys can do. Once the guys come and they're isolated in that place, they're fucked. There is nothing. They are dead. They will not survive this. There is no way they're getting out of this alive. Yeah, without yeah. without weapons of some kind, and even, Shit, even I then. mean, like, yeah. But maybe you have a much better chance. Yeah. If you put a gun into their hands, then maybe. Um. Okay. So getting on from all of that, the line when she's like, "What's a drain pipe?" Now she does explain herself by being like, "I live in the city. We don't have that kind of stuff." Yes, you do. But whatever. I get it. Kids are di idiots. I. I've been around people who are like this, but my real question there is there's a note yeah. at the front door yeah. that says the key is hidden under the drain pipe. What the fuck is the point? You might as well leave the keys in the lock. <laughs> I don't understand this. Yeah. You left a note on the door that says yeah. where the keys are. It should be like the what? keys are in the spot we normally have yes. them, or something like that, where it's like, okay, they're in the spot something I cryptic. know, but that a random person. But they're so far, like they're in the middle of like nowhere. So then leave so the door I'm open, sure, yeah, I'm, or not yeah. like open, but the unlocked, unlocked, yeah, right, or leave the keys in the yeah. door. Sure, like putting a note on the door that says exactly where the keys are. Yeah, there's no point <laughs> in not leaving the door unlocked. Yeah, so that made me laugh when she was like. Those notes says the keys are... What? <laughs> what? Come on. You guys could do better than that. Any, I mean, people are that dumb, though. That's not a plot hole. There are people. I have definitely encountered that kind of situation where I'm like, why did you do this? Yeah. This is just this. And then be yeah. like, oh, I guess that was dumb. Yeah. There's dumb people. Anyway. Um, and the... Yeah, he... I mean, they get lost in the woods for a bit, and there's this one, there's this sound in the movie that happens oh, a few times. There's one crazy. when they're out in the woods, and then there's one at the very end when the killer, like, reveals himself yeah. and whatever. And it's this kind of, like, almost Predator-esque, like, like uh, yeah, clicking uh, kind of thing. It's creepy. Uh, uh, it's uh, creepy. Uh, I don't like it. It's a great sound. It's, it's really very, good. very yeah. creepy. Yeah, them getting lost in the woods is like, oh, my God. <laughs> And yeah. it just, it's nighttime too, like terrifying. The guy tries to do something once again, gets called stupid yet again. I hate these people. Um, what I also really like too about <clears throat> the friendship dynamic is that I felt like they bounced from every emotional state like really well. 
and it all felt very realistic like so they would be stressed and in the car when he's chasing them but then like once they were somewhere safe they were like laughing and joking about it and that just felt very believable to me yeah. because like you can tell that they're all really good friends but like when they were under pressure and when things are scary like they obviously are upset and like yelling at each other and whatever but then they get over it and i just liked that yeah um they cut the power yeah. they cut the phone line they know the phone number which is pretty crazy yeah um so that made you think like maybe the aunt's in on it or whatever yeah i kept um, thinking like everybody was in on it i highly doubt it i, I mean I, they're I going like... after random film students after there i mean yeah well and now obviously i don't i think it was like a random thing but sure. at the time i was like somebody in this group is in on it and i like that i mean i've always been a fan of this is why i like certain movies that people hate like open house or something i like random killers who are never explained there's no reason that's scarier to me yeah that's scarier than the reveal of it's your uncle because you right. ran over his cat when he was 12 and he never got over it yeah that my, kind my, of stuff <laughs> is like oh well that's lame because if as long as you got like a clean slate you should be all right exactly but like just someone random just... coming after you for no reason other than they walked past you yeah that's terrifying yeah. you can't do anything about yeah, that because it's like a force of nature yeah that's why michael myers you know in the og yeah it's so terrifying but then when it all starts she did was to drop become, off some keys yeah when it starts to become over explained it yeah. can lose that uh that fear, fear factor yeah the fear factor sure yeah um all right another pro tip this is very important if you ever in a situation where you need to call for help, especially when your service is spotty and you're looking for bars and all that stuff and you get a connection and they answer the phone, 911, you know, what's your emergency? First thing you say is what? The address. The address you're at. Make that the very first words out of your mouth. Whatever address you're at, boom, say it immediately, then tell them your your problem okay you want to make sure they know exactly where you're at instantaneously before it cuts out before the killer comes in and gets you right you've got precious few seconds you've got to make sure they know where you are first yeah um yeah. anyway <laughs> another thing here this isn't unbelievable per se but this is very dumb for them not to do not one of them ever tries to grab a weapon of any sort mm, yeah. this seems unbelievable to me i'm not going to say a plot hole because it's not technically no but it does seem like a common sense plot hole when someone is cornered shit we made a video with my kids when they were eight and my daughter's initial reaction was we need weapons we need <laughs> weapons right it's yeah it's a, it's your survival instincts kicking in right yeah i need something to protect myself my hands aren't enough my body's not enough what can i grab there's knives in this house there's a bat there's a a piece of wood anything you can get your goddamn hands on that's that's you know can be used as a as a weapon yeah you'd you, be grabbing you ain't it. going down without a fight you shouldn't you should so none of these guys grab weapons yeah. um as far as like the kills go they're pretty creepy i mean when the guy walks in the room and the door closes behind him and then it like he screams nothing and then the door slightly starts to open that was That's really terrifying. scary yeah because at that point i was like is it supernatural like what's happening yeah because it was just so scary but yeah i think they were good i also that was... like that you really never see the killer yes i do too yeah because it's like they're everything's so dark yeah and they're all like running and screaming like the girl's screaming in this too yeah Holy shit, like their screams sounded legit. <laughs> and here's another thing. This is much like, you know, like the movie Crawl or the movie Burning Bright or any of that stuff. Like when we we also get this added layer because they're lost in the woods at some point and they're up there till night. And it's like if they don't find the house, they find their salvation. Right. And they get to that house and they are able to survive because, you know, they, they find shelter. But in this scenario, one really cool thing that I really love that adds to this is that when they come outside to leave, they've stolen their car. Yeah, that's that so was good. good. I haven't seen that in a movie in a long while. That was really good. So they yeah. came, they stole their car, cut the power, cut the phone lines. They are absolutely screwed. 
Um, so when they come out and there's no car, I was like, oh man. I know. But here's the added layer that, you know, maybe not won't get talked about enough with this movie is that these kids try to run off into the woods, they're gonna die. They're not gonna survive the night out there. No. Right? It is freezing. Cool. It is dark. Like when it they go snowing. out in the daytime, I think he says that it's like seventeen or eighteen degrees. Dude, like it's really zero. cold, yeah, at night. And none of them are prepared in, to go they're outside. In like northern New York. Yeah. They're it not prepared cold. to go outside either. No. They're like hanging out and they're like no. you know comfy clothes or whatever when the killer yeah. comes they just run outside in their yeah. basic clothes yeah you wouldn't survive an hour no. in that temperature with no proper like snow gear kind of stuff and even if they had their arctic wear on they're not making it through the night no way right and they're far from anywhere yeah and they don't even know anything about the area so even if there was something close by they don't know where it's at and they'd go in the wrong direction unless they got super lucky and were resilient as hell and the people couldn't find them your chances are almost zero this predicament is a nightmare yes for these kids there's yeah. nothing these guys can do Ugh. so terrifying for sure and that's it man i mean the movie ends with that horrible feeling of like someone watching you yeah, I think it really instills that, like, paranoia, for sure. Yeah. Because it is, like, you never know. I see. You. you never know who could be out there watching. No. Nope. Especially nowadays, because this is filmed, like, 2000-something. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's old. Yeah. Like, they have flip phones and stuff. Yeah. But now, when really, like, everything is online. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's a good film. It's very really cool. effective really found cool. footage film. One that was forgotten from uh, years and years ago, and one we are resurfacing because it needs more attention. Yes. Um, I think next week we might check out the film Skew, which I haven't seen in forever, and that's another one I remember liking and wanting to resurrect to have a discussion on. But until then, guys.